Welcome to another session of control of nonlinear dynamical systems. Well, we are into the lectures 8 to 10, as you can see in the label. Well, you can't see in the label, but I can see it. Now, we have been talking about LaSalle invariance principle, and I believe you've also seen uh, some examples in the tutorial. So, hopefully, you have a little bit more uh, clarity on how to use this. Okay. I want to revisit the example because um, there is a small error. Uh, but but anyway, let's again go back and do this example and then I'll go back to the proof and we will go through the proof. Anyway, it was not, the proof was not completed. Uh, so, we'll try to finish it today um, and uh, then go ahead with whatever the rest of the material, okay. So, uh, this was a spring mass damper example and we were trying to use not the general LaSalle invariance principle, but the barbashim krasovsky lasalle which is the theorem that gives you stability of the uh, zero equilibrium okay so this is the asymptotical asymptotic stability result all right this is what we are trying to use in this example so this is the very simple uh, linear system corresponding to this guy uh, again the picture and the constants don't correspond but it's very easy to derive this yeah one is k by m other is c by m so very standard uh, and simple dynamics yeah and we choose a uh, again a very standard candidate Lyapunov function. In fact, this does turn out to be a candidate Lyapunov function. Yeah. Remember that for applying the babashin krasovsky lasalle uh, theorem, we do need a candidate Lyapunov function. That is, it has to be C1 and it has to be positive definite. Okay. So, this is in fact C1 and also radially unbounded. Yeah. So, it is a linear system. So, obviously, like you remember, local and global are all uh, the same. Okay. And then when you compute the v dot, it will turn out to be minus k2x2 square, right, which is just negative semi-definite, okay. Now, uh, now of course, I have not, uh, we want to apply the babashin krasovsky lasalle We know that the spring mass damper system, yeah, if you, if you just look at the system and you, uh, you know that if you just leave this mass, you pull it and leave it anywhere, it is going to come to a stop, yeah, unless you apply some external force, yeah. So, you know that this is in fact an asymptotic, uh, asymptotically stable system, right. Uh, so, how do we prove that? We use the, uh, the theorem that we have and we first define the set E, right, which is the uh, set which has V dot equal to 0, right. So, remember that for applying this sort of a theorem, we do not care about the invariant set and so on and so forth. If you remember, this theorem does not require us to construct the omega set and so on. So, we do not worry about the omega set at all, it, it, it will seem like we are working with the entire domain, alright. But you also understand very well, I hope that we can construct the omega set just by using this v function itself, yeah, we have done this in the pendulum example, yeah, okay. So, what is the set E? It is the set where x2 is 0 and x1 is arbitrary, okay. Then there is a sort of an incorrect statement here. So, uh, as always we start by assuming that E itself is the invariant set, okay. Uh, and for E to remain invariant, uh, unfortunately it stated here that we need both x1 dot and x2 dot to be 0, but that is not required. x1 dot need not be 0 obviously, because you can have anything in the first coordinate, right. Therefore, even if it changes, we do not care, it is whatever, and anything is allowed here, because this does not contribute to v dot being 0, okay. So, this is not required, yeah, this is, that is why I have now crossed it out, thank you for pointing it out. Um, and we only need x2 dot to remain at 0, because if x2 dot is non-zero, then I move out of the 0 in the x2 coordinate, which is a problem, right, this is not okay, okay. So, in order to have x2 dot to be exactly 0, we start looking at the dynamics, right. If you want x2 dot to be exactly 0, and you already have x2 to be 0, right, because the definition of E is that x2 is 0, right. Then the only way for x2 dot to become, to be 0 is for x1 to be 0, right, and k1, k2 are strictly positive. So, x1 has to be 0, okay. So, that is the idea, alright. So, now what have we shown? We have shown that 
the only way for us to have invariance is if both x1 and x2 are 0. So, this is what becomes our uh, invariant set M, the largest invariant set M inside E. And because this largest invariant set in this case contains only the origin, the origin is asymptotically stable. Okay? Uh, remember, we can't say anything about exponential stability, etc., from Lassalle invariance. That's not possible. Yeah. And in general, nonlinear systems anyway, we don't target uh, exponential stability. Yeah. That's a pretty strong result. But again, I mean, these are all what I'm. This course is more, I would say, still classical. Yeah, in the sense these this material is all classical material i am not talking about modern material right in modern material you have um, you can actually do fixed time finite time controllers fixed time controllers so obviously things have moved ahead significantly yeah uh, first of all we are only covering classical material a that's not the only thing if you want to do things like fixed time finite time these kind of controllers then your controller will become non smooth yeah so you can have jitters sharp changes in your control. Yeah? So, depending on your application, on your actuator, ability of your actuator to reproduce really fast changes. Yeah? Uh, for example, if you ask your uh, motor you know, to change really uh, RPMs very quickly. Yeah? For a motor still may be easy, if you go to a gas thruster very difficult. Right? So, depending on your actuator. Yeah? Depending on your actuator, it's your call. I mean, if you're saying change in voltages, sure, maybe you can, you know, whatever, you can have a very quickly, quick acting potentiometer circuit. A digital circuit can act at a pretty, pretty quick rate. I mean, you know, 100 hertz and so on. Yeah. So, depending on your requirement, you can <coughs> potentially achieve this kind of control uh, or finite fixed time stability or not. So, in this course, we are only talking about smooth controllers. Okay. So, that's also why you get only asymptotic results and sometimes exponential results okay all right great just wanted to correct this so this is an error i fixed that now uh, let's go back to the proof i'm going to start from the beginning again we have talked about all the terms involved so i'm not going to re uh, you know redefine these um, and this is the proof of the general lasalle invariance the proof of babashin krasovsky lasalle is a subset of this obviously if uh, it I, I hope it's very easy for you to see that if you satisfy this, then you definitely satisfy this. Yeah, assumptions, all these assumptions here definitely imply this. Yeah, I hope it's obvious because we just use the same method. The only thing you had to do to apply this result was to was to actually define a omega. But we have already done that in our pendulum example. We use the v itself to define an omega. Right. So, once I have this kind of a condition to be satisfied, this is definitely satisfied and when you get here that 0 is the only invariant set, then 0 becomes asymptotically stable. You converge to 0 right, by this result. The only thing, remember, let us be careful here. The statement of Lassalle invariance principle does not talk about stability, does not say origin is stable. Okay? Here you do say that. If you say asymptotic stability, you have stability and convergence, both. Here you do not say anything about stability of origin. You just talk about convergence to a limit set. Hmm? Why? Because you cannot talk about stability of origin in the general case. Again, Van der Paul oscillator. When you get confused, think Van der Paul oscillator. It has a limit cycle behavior. Origin is actually not stable. Right? So, you cannot talk about stability in general. But when you have these kinds of assumptions happening, that is you start with a positive definite v and you have a negative semi definite v dot. Okay? Just by Lyapunov theorem you have stability. Right? Because I started with v positive definite and v dot was negative semi definite. So, just by the Lyapunov theorem I have stability. Done. Just by this statement. Alright? And so, when I go here I do not need to you know, obtain stability from Lassalle invariance. Stability is already done by Lyapunov theorem and convergence given by Lassalle invariance. Okay? So, it should be obvious to you that these results, if you have these satisfied, these are much stronger requirements, much stronger requirements than this. Okay? So, I am not going to actually prove it, but it is pretty straightforward, I think. Hmm? Okay. Great. So, we only prove the more uh, 
general case that is the lasalle invariance principle so every v absolutely Sim not for every v for every v with v dot less than equal to 0 recall the pendulum example how did we do it we use the fact that v dot is non increasing over time therefore whatever initial value you start at you remain below that value and that gives you a invariant set omega compact invariant set omega done okay so these two are together are required huh? not just any positive definite v will not work huh? okay all right so how did we go about the proof we started by saying omega is closed in bond we just we just started by looking at all the assumptions okay so omega was closed compact which implies closed and bounded omega is invariant okay which means if i start in omega my entire trajectory remains in omega for all time beyond initial time hmm? okay now uh, this implies that if i start in omega my trajectories are bounded right so the entire lasalle invariance postulates that you start in omega okay so that is required so once i start in omega omega is compact therefore all trajectories are bounded okay and once you have this bounded trajectories uh, vidyasagar gives really nice two results three results in fact and that's what we use pretty much to complete our proof we are not doing anything honestly okay the first result says that if you have bounded trajectories then the uh, limit set denoted as such okay notice it is indexed with x0 it depends on the initial condition right the limit set is non empty closed and bounded okay what is the limit set limit set is where all the points go towards okay this is that's essentially the definition of the limit set that's the set towards which all the trajectories will go eventually okay eventually they will go to some point in the limit set okay and we are now saying by this vidyasagar's result that it is non empty closed and bounded something nice already okay we have not yet connected omega bar and omega okay but i think we sort of gave it a thought and we realize that omega bar has to be a subset of omega okay anyway yeah because if your trajectories are starting there and remaining there starting in omega remaining in omega therefore the limit set also has to be within omega only can't be outside it yeah? seems ridiculous okay so limit set is non empty closed and bounded and inside omega second result again by boundedness of trajectories you have that all your states all your solutions converge to the limit set this is more just by the definition of limit set itself and secondly omega bar is also an invariant set okay all right so uh, this is again something that we sort of you know sort of understood by these kind of examples yeah and i think i made you write a few points which i asked all of you to you know memorize those of you who have not written these points write it from your friends and then memorize okay because there is no way we are going to prove all this and it's going to get etched in your memory or anything yeah you can look at the proof if you want for all this but yeah so limit set is always closed okay limit set is always closed limit set is invariant you start in the limit set you remain in the limit set okay great so you have these three very very nice results yeah courtesy vidyasagar right well i mean he may not have come with the results on his own but whatever for us courtesy vidyasagar okay all right great great um, now we want to connect this omega bar omega with the set e and so on and so forth okay this is our plan yeah because lasalle invariance gives these elements right it gives us the set once you start with the set omega it gives you an e and then gives you an m so what we want to do is we want to connect this omega bar to this e and m or right? that that will be our aim how do these sets compare okay so then we sort of invoke what is called the monotone convergence theorem i have not stated it in this course but we use it regularly in adaptive control so it is a very standard result that's required in adaptive control uh, here we saw probably require it only once here um but it basically says that if a function is lower bounded and non increasing okay function is lower bounded non increasing yeah then 
limit as t goes to infinity of the function exists. Okay, you can state it the other way around also. The monotone convergence theorem: if the function is upper bounded and non-decreasing, then also it has a limit as t goes to infinity. Okay, this limit need not be zero, unlike what I have stated here in this <coughs> notes. So I have cancelled it and written c. Okay, this is basically the monotone convergence theorem. Okay, so function and so in our case the function v is in fact lower bounded right we took it to be positive definite it's a candidate lyapunov function yeah and it is non increasing right because v dot is less than equal to 0 right so as a function of time it is non increasing can be flat or going down flat or going down can't be going up only two possibilities huh? okay great so it has a limit as t goes to infinity whatever with this limit is we don't care now cool things start to happen because of the fact that v of t is constant yeah v can be seen as a function of time right we already know this just by plugging in the solutions v becomes a function of time that is how we take the derivative also i mean that's sort of the notion of taking the derivative although the derivative is something we've defined as the directional derivative right but this is the notion that v is a function of time actually yeah once we plug in the solutions the only problem with this very very uh, Theoretically intense folks will tell you that when you plug in the solution, you are plugging in the initial condition. So it is not just a function of time, but also a function of initial conditions. Okay. So whatever result you get is not uniform with respect to all initial conditions. Okay. Therefore, if you notice uh, this Lasalle in when you look at this limit set, x zero dependence is clearly stated here. Okay. This is for this particular reason, because whenever you plug in all this x v of x of t here, I didn't write it. We are using the shorthand, remember. But this is actually plugging in this solution, right? I mean, it is plugging in this guy. Yeah. So therefore, there is an x zero dependence here. Okay. We can't get rid of that. All right. Great. Okay. Now what we plan to do is we plan to show that omega bar is in fact inside the set E. Okay, uh, how do we do that? We already know that omega bar is inside omega. Very easy to argue. We already argued it in fact. Now, what did we do? This is where we played a fun trick, which seemed to be difficult to digest, but it, it does happen. We take any point arbitrary in the limit set. Okay, any arbitrary point in the limit set. Now, we know by definition of a limit point, because P is a limit point, that there is a time sequence such that the solutions converge to p okay by time sequence i mean this ti is not like uh, continuous it is you can take any time sequence 1 2 3 ti can be t1 can be 1 t2 can be 2 or t1 can be 1 t2 can be 1.2 t3 can be 1.4 whatever it's a time sequence doesn't have to be any the only thing is i has to go to infinity any sequence and ti has to go to infinity as i goes to infinity Okay. Therefore, so what we are saying is that as time becomes really large in this sequence, you do converge to this limit point. Okay. This is the definition of the limit point. Okay. Uh, however difficult it might be to grasp, but we have seen these examples, right? I mean, we saw sequences like half one, half one, half one, where if I take t1, ti equal to one, two, three, four, this is a problem. It doesn't converge to anything because it oscillates between half and one, right? But if I take ti equal to one, three, five, half 2 4 6 1 all right so there is always a possibility of multiple limit points okay not that unusual it's not that unusual and although i have given discrete examples even continuous examples are not difficult to construct okay in this way okay all right great so p is a limit point okay and what now i start playing with continuity okay what is this uh, i let's see let's see i write this expression first first i write this expression let me write this expression first okay limit as i goes to infinity v of x t i okay all right all right i hope you see that this quantity is actually just c all right okay why because ti is going to infinity as i goes to infinity 
ओके सो आई माइट जस्ट इवन राइट गेन इज राइट इट लाइक दिस डजेंट मैटर या बिकॉज हाउ एवर इट गोज टू इन्फिनिटी आई डोंट केयर इन विच एवर डायरेक्शन बट द पॉइंट इज टी आई इज गोइंग टू इन्फिनिटी बिकॉज आई गोइंग टू इन्फिनिटी विच मीन्स दैट दिस कम्स टू फोर्स दैट लिमिट एग्जिस्ट एंड इट इज सम कॉन्स्टेंट वैल्यू सी नाउ बाई कॉन्टिन्यूटी ऑफ द फंक्शन वी एंड ऑल्सो एक्स एक्स इज ऑल्सो कंटिन्यूस द सोल्यूशन आर कंटिन्यूस राइट वी इज कंटिन्यूस सो आई एम फ्री टू मूव दिस लिमिट इन साइड दैट्स वॉट आई डू मूव दिस लिमिट इन साइड राइट एंड दिस क्वान्टिटी जस्ट इन साइड दिस is just p okay so what i have is v of p and so i have just proved it v of p is equal to c now i did not i did not you know have any bias towards any particular point or something in the limit set right i took an arbitrary limit point in the limit set yeah therefore if i had chosen any other point also yeah p bar nothing would have changed right the analysis doesn't change so although it seems very very unintuitive or funny or odd all the limit points in this limit set map to one value through v and that's this value c okay okay so i mean if i was to write in uh, sort of text it would i would say that omega bar or the limit set is a level set of v yeah for those of you who know what level sets are level set is basically any v inverse c v inverse c is the level set okay so omega bar not is but belongs to a level set actually whatever belongs to a level set so essentially what this is saying is that v of omega bar x0 is equal to this constant yeah this is a notation by the way this is notation you can't actually plug in a set inside a function okay you have to plug in points from that set and this notation uh, when you say v of a set you mean you plug in points all the points from the set so if you plug in any point from the set omega bar x0 you always get c okay this is very cool then yeah what will i do i i i start with i take any trajectory yeah x star inside this yeah and basically what i do is i take any trajectory x star with initial condition here okay then um i already know omega bar is invariant right um in fact i should not have used i have already used x0 right you know okay okay i'll use another initial condition uh doesn't matter actually okay i start with some initial condition in omega bar okay that's all now if i start in omega bar i know i'll remain in omega bar because omega bar itself is an invariant set right and if i remain in omega bar i know for this entire trajectory vx star yeah v of x star of t is zero therefore the derivative along this solution that is v dot of x star sorry v of x star is c i'm sorry v of x star is in fact c so therefore v dot of x star is actually equal to zero yeah because along this entire trajectory in this limit set if you think about it as i move here yeah as i move along this omega bar set my v doesn't change at all therefore v dot is actually equal to 0 okay v dot is actually equal to 0 so what have i just proved that on the set omega bar on the set omega bar and you can just conclude it by this only forget all this starting trajectory and all that you don't have to worry about starting trajectory just by this expression you know that v dot of omega bar is going to be zero 
right? Because v dot is v is remaining constant on this entire set. So v dot is zero on this entire set, which means then any trajectory in that set, and there are trajectories in that set. So the only purpose of saying this sentence is to indicate that there are trajectories in the set, right? Because it's an invariant set. If you start there, you remain there. Okay. Therefore, v dot is zero, and v dot equal to zero describes what set? E. E, right? So I can't say that. So therefore, I can't say that omega bar is the entire E set or something. But I definitely know omega bar is inside E. Okay, that should be very obvious. That omega bar is inside E because v does not change in omega bar. V does not change in E. Therefore, omega bar has to be a subset of E. It may be the same size, but it can't be bigger because E is the set. Where v dot is equal to zero and all of omega, so therefore e is the largest possible set where v is v dot is zero. Okay, so omega bar is definitely inside e. Okay, excellent. Now, then things are very straightforward. After that is just one sentence. Omega bar is invariant. Okay, omega bar is it's just it doesn't only have the property that v dot of omega bar is zero. Okay, it also has the property that it is invariant. E does not have this property, by the way. Yeah, we've already seen by examples that E itself does not have this property. Okay, but which set has this property? M has this property that it is invariant and it's contained in E. So omega bar also is inside E, also invariant. M is also invariant, but we already said that M is the largest invariant set. Yeah, so we said that M is the largest invariant set. Therefore, omega bar has to be contained in E M also. Okay, cannot be larger than M because if it was, then omega bar would be the largest invariant set. M would mean nothing. Okay, so M is the largest invariant set. Therefore, omega bar is in M, and therefore in E also. Okay, so now what have we shown? So we already know that all trajectories are going to go. Yeah, whenever you start inside omega, you are going to go to omega bar, right? And omega bar is inside M. Right? So Lasalle invariance is proved because I started in the set omega, the larger invariant set, and I have proved that I go to omega bar, which is a set. Which is inside M, so therefore we have proved that we go to M. Okay. Now remember the interesting thing here is we never prove that omega bar is equal to M. Definitely omega bar is not equal to E in most cases because E is not invariant. Yeah, almost invariably the set E that you get in most examples will never be invariant. You have to hunt for an invariant set inside E. Okay. We've done that in a couple of examples. I'm hoping that you've seen some more examples of the same, uh, but that's the pretty standard situation. Okay, but omega bar could be equal to m. We've not stated it though. Okay, m could have points which are beyond omega bar. By the way, the only thing we had to prove was that we converge to the set M, not all of the set M. We are not saying surjectivity or onto, or we are not saying anything about those properties. We are just saying that we converge to M. Okay, and that's proved by this. Okay. Absolutely, absolutely. The whole sequence is here. I mean, actually, more or less here. I can just add one more. <laughs> okay. So you start at omega, and you actually converge to this guy. Obviously, you can't converge to random sets. You converge to the limit sets. System trajectories will converge to limit sets. That's the purpose of defining limit sets. The only thing we have done by our assumption is that we have proved that it's inside M. Why? Because see, why? Why do we do all this? I mean, one might ask. Yeah, you can't actually compute limit sets of systems. You will never be able to do that. If I give you slightly more, slightly complicated. I mean, sure, for this maybe for this uh, linear system, great. But even for the pendulum example, you'll not be able to compute the solution at all to be able to compute limit sets. Okay, so there is no particular. Uh, I mean, 
we want to find qualitative methods which let us conclude something about system behavior asymptotically without actually computing solutions. Okay, this is where linear systems, non-linear systems are a world apart. For linear systems, everything can be solved. Okay, sure, there is a lot of theory on, you know, overshoot control and, and whatever and, and, you know, you can do a lot of cool things using transfer functions. Sure, great, no problem, I agree. But you, you uh, can solve the system anyway. I can do the same in time domain, it does not look as elegant maybe as it would do in transfer function domain doing overshoot uh, minimization and things like that, but it is not impossible to do. Yeah. Here in nonlinear system it will be impossible, you cannot analytically solve the system at all. Yeah. So you are relying on you know MATLAB or Python or whatever, some OD solvers numerically to even get a solution, right? which is not telling you anything about limit sets, no way. If you just, if I just give you an arbitrary nonlinear system, you can keep initializing it at many, many different points. You may never be find, able to find a limit set. I mean, how do you guess it? Okay. So these are the uh, sure. Again, linearization might help you a little bit, but there's no guarantee. Okay. You will miss a lot of potential limit points. Okay. So nonlinear systems, of course, uh, are more complicated, but of course also offer more rich behavior. Yeah. Um, and that is why we don't talk about, you know, we, we, we never say that I will compute omega bar. No, you can't compute omega bar. And so, Lassar invariance just gives you a set M, which is maybe a little bit conservative, but good enough. In fact, you have seen that uh, in, in, in the two examples that, that you have seen, M is not even conservative, right? M is the limit set, right? Here, if you see M is exactly the equilibrium, so obviously the limit point. <laughs> Yeah, the equilibrium is the limit point in this case. Yeah, I hope you see that too. Yeah, and here also for the pendulum case, you can see that you had these two points, which are again equilibrium. Okay, which are again equilibrium. All right. Okay.